And we're trying a new technology, so that's why we have the microphone. I, it's not going to help you, it's going to help them. So we're going to start doing a live feed of our communication meetings so that anyone in the district could watch it. Um, at some point, you may even decide that for whatever reason, it's, it's really nice if you come here because it's more interactive, but if you couldn't make it, you could uh, just uh, put, put on the live stream or watch it later if you wanted to, or if there are certain portions, you could have people in your building watch certain portions if there were questions. So this is our trial. Uh, we'll see how it works. And I think we have one person watching it right now, which is Brian. <laughs> oh yeah, and Bob. Oh, we got two viewers right now. That is awesome. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how it works. Um, what's that? Oh good, Bonnie Good is watching too. That's awesome. So um, thank you for being here. Uh, here's one of the rules. Um, it is always tricky to get to these on time, depending on where you come from. So uh, just do your best to get here when you can. It's awesome if people can get here on time, but we know that uh, school dismissals and traffic uh, will make the difference most often of whether you can get here on time or not, including many of us. Uh, if we don't get out before McKay gets out, we're in trouble to get here on time. So, um, could I just have a show of hands um, if you are um, trying to get who's here? If you are a school based office manager, clerical support, SOS. So, here's our school based office people in the room. Uh, what about department based office, office managers? Okay. Um, instructional assistants? Keep them up if they're self-contained classrooms. Okay. <laughs> Slowly went down. Uh, uh, support out in departments that might not be clerical. Custodians, maintenance. Raise your hand. Any from custodial maintenance? Who did I? You? Pretty much. <laughs> Facilities, <laughs> awesome. And who'd I miss? Okay, so a few of you are brand new, so I'm going to tell you how it works. Um, Christy is the person who communicates with you. If you have items you'd really like to have on the agenda, email her. Email her with questions you have. Sometimes there'll be questions we can answer. Sometimes I'll come directly to you with an answer from somebody. So it might be something that feels just very building specific and we'll send somebody directly to answer you. Um, so this is kind of your way to get answers from me, even if it comes on behalf of me through somebody else. So um, we'll try to keep on the agenda um, topics that we believe are important to the district. So I think one of them today is around boundary realignment. That's going to be an important topic. You'll hear about it often. Um, and our hope is that you will take information back to your schools and your sites. Um, because we'll have the live stream, you'll be able to, um, if you feel like you um, don't quite have a way to explain it, you could even have the exact portion of the presentation if you thought it was really important that people at your site needed to know about it. Um, especially, I think, when we get into the boundary adjustment um, process, that when you start getting questions, you should be able to know right where we are in that process from these meetings. So uh, that's our goal. Um, our goal is that you get to interact with um, district level leaders, um, that you can bring issues and questions forward, and that you can take those back to your schools. So uh, with that, I promised uh, Gwen that she could be first on the agenda after um, I did the introduction. So this is uh, Gwen Bruy fink and Gwen is our coordinator of secondary curriculum, so 6 through 12, director of secondary, sorry, wrong title, right. director of secondary curriculum. But what she also has under her is professional development. And uh, if you've been in the district a long time, uh, and you've seen a change in classified professional development, raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, 
That is in part from, it came up in this group, it came up in our joint labor management uh, team called PACE, and Gwen is one of the first people that began the implementation of the classified pathways. So with that, I, Gwen, you have to have the microphone. Here, I'll trade you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, coming around to you right now um, is just a one-pager, um, it's actually two pages, but it's elementary on one side, secondary on the other side. Um, summary of the classified pathways, which start on otherwise known as the ESP pathways, we kind of use those words interchangeably, which start for secondary on Thursday, which is the 11th of October, and for elementary on Friday, the 12th of October. Secondary has two days in a row um, because of the PD calendar. So these are the classes on the flyer, um, and they also were sent to office managers in schools today in color, so hopefully you'll see them showing up looking like this at your site. Um, but these are just a summary of what has already been communicated through the course bulletin and in the ATL. It's just a one-page kind of quick view of what the session is called, what the ATL number, so where you can register for it in the ATL. That's the little hashtag at the end of each title, um, where it's located, and then what room it's in. We, this is kind of a huge coordination project um, for the PD office because we need to kind of, we, we joke that we're like the monopoly players of the, of the Salem-Kaiser area where we kind of buy up a bunch of meeting space and then, um, and then try to place people, place classes in those locations based on enrollment so that we don't have to turn anybody away. Um, but one of our biggest constraints in Salem-Kaiser just as a city is meeting space. And so our largest meeting space holds about 120 people. So once we get higher than that, we have to cap enrollment on classes. So our most popular ones right now, not surprising, are um, the simple strategies of self-care. So thanks to Chris Moore for bringing that to the forefront in our district. Um, that is at Mill Creek Inn. Are you guys familiar where that is? It's over across from Costco. Um, over in that area. Um, and then the other one that's really um, popular this year has over 100 participants is the um, Office of Behavioral Learning. I'm talking about students with complex needs. So that also has over 100 people. So you might see fewer offerings this year, but it's because everybody's kind of gravitating towards those two sessions. So some of our um, less um, attended or low, low enrollment um, had to be canceled because everybody is taking those other ones. So this is a real quick just update. Um, the graphic design pathway that we have had scheduled since last spring, um, that's for elementary had to be canceled because we contract with an outside provider who's gravely ill and so she and they couldn't find a replacement. So <clears throat> graphic design is um, canceled for the year. The positive communication class also didn't have enough enrollment and the facilitator who we also contract with outside of the district was having a hard time finding the right people to provide that. Um, teaming with your teachers for secondary also had very low enrollment and chaos to calm secondary they also didn't have someone to teach that. Um, so those are the ones that have been canceled. You will have gotten an email if you were a person registered for those and you can sign up for another for another pathway. If you're currently on a wait list for a pathway, um, things are capped at capacity for the facilities. So if you're on a wait list, I would recommend um, finding another one um, to register for so you're sure to get in. Um, and we're getting some really great data about what we're really interested in learning about. So hopefully we can provide some more opportunities in the spring for one time or refresher trainings for things that people weren't able to get into. Um, so that's the plan for the year. Are there questions about, it's nice to not have to kind of talk about the basic logistics because we've been doing this for a couple of years now. Are there any questions about, about that basic logistics or um, kind of specific classes or questions, concerns? Yeah. Can you say that again? Oh, Broadway Commons is um, is on Broadway. Sorry, <laughs> but it's um, it's near Salem Cinema and Christo's Pizzeria. Um, it's it's attached to Salem Alliance Church. So does that make sense? It's on Market and Broadway, basically the intersection of Market and Broadway. It's a coffee shop, but the event center is up above um, on the second and third floors. Um, super beautiful facility. Um, there's parking behind kind of the coffee shop area, but then there's also a big gravel parking lot um, right behind the Northwest Bike Hub, um, which is across from the food pod 
kind of thing. If you know that area, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're like, what are you talking about? Good. But that's where Broadway Commons is. So when people go into Broadway Commons, it will feel like a coffee shop because it is one. And then there's some confusion. So you just need to go up, up the stairs and then it'll make a lot more sense. Yeah. Other questions about logistics or concerns? How many of you are registered for a pathway or planning to go? Oh, that's great. Another big factor that we have this year that I want to make sure I mention is that um, you're also more than welcome and in fact encouraged to participate in your school-based PD if you're a school-based ESP. Um, and you, if you're not a school-based ESP, if you want to see what's going on in the buildings, I highly recommend that you um, connect with the school principal and, and sit in on, on their PD. Um, but elementary, of course, is going through their math adoption this year. So many of our school-based ESPs are, are doing the building-based um, PD around that. So um, that's also impacting some of, our, um, some of our enrollment and some of our pathways. Well, if you have any questions, um, Cheryl White, who is one of your um, colleagues uh, in the PD office, it knows all things um, Pathway. So you can email her, or call, give her a call, or you can also feel free to call me or give me an email at any point. We're excited. Should be a good year. All right, thanks. Thank yeah. Cool logistic question. That's I know. Awesome. I was like, <laughs> woo, woo. All right, uh, the next person up is uh, Lillian Govis. If you have not met her, she is our Director of uh, Communications and uh, Community Relations. I'm not very good with titles, how about that? So this now you know this about me. Um, and so she's gonna walk you through a uh, number of agenda items today. And often there will be um, some questions that come up around crisis communication and all that. So we thought we'd launch the year with those topics. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming today. I brought presents. It's not food, but it's still a present. Um, these are the Everyday 24J buttons. How many of you guys have these already? All right. I like those hands. Yay. If you want more, help yourself. We also have yard signs, flyers, posters. Uh, how many folks have seen the PSA? The little video. Public service announcement. Sorry for you educators. Awesome, yes. So we have a really short video. It's in English and Spanish. It's animated, it's very cute. Um, and maybe I'll pull that up to close out our meeting just because it's adorable and it only lasts 60 seconds. But um, so we are working on our Everyday 24J attendance campaign. Um, and this is a big deal for us because how many of our students are chronically absent? Who knows the number? Christy does, but who else? Nope. Almost one in three students is chronically absent. So they're missing two days of school each month. By the end of the school year, that comes out to be, Rita, how much of, how much lost instruction? Putting you on the, per year. Uh, an entire month of lost instruction by the end of the school year. So, <laughs> Rita, for, I know that the people who, um, couldn't hear on the microphone. Rita totally knew that answer and got it right. Um, so yeah, just two days of school a month by the end of the school year turns out to a month of lost instruction. Do that kindergarten through eighth grade and by the time you get to high school, you're starting off with an entire year of lost time that you aren't even getting in that classroom. So we know we have some of the best educators, um, definitely in the state, in the country, but they just have to have access to children, right? So that's why we're working on this attendance campaign. On SharePoint, we have all of the toolkit there for you to use however you like. So you can access social media posts, you can access newsletter posts, you can put in requests for flyers. We have really cool magnets where you just mark the day off on them in English and Spanish. And it shows you if you're in the green zone, you're doing good. Then you get to yellow, uh-oh, you're getting close to being chronically absent. And then red zone, oh no. We need to help with this. So um, so we have all of those available for you free. You may have seen, uh, I know on Lancaster next to, not too far from our office, I saw just this morning on my way to work, our new digital billboard. Um, and we have those in English and Spanish at multiple locations. Our bus advertisements are going up next week to remind folks that we need their ki we need kids in school. And then over the winter, um, November, December, and January, we will be showing those 
public service announcement announcement advertisements at the movie theaters um, so that we catch those families when they're having that that family time catching a film weather's not that fun um, just a reminder we need you in school now these are paid for obviously we don't have that kind of budget they're paid for through grant dollars um, so we're working that to help us reinforce this messaging. We're also partnering with the Salem Kaiser Coalition for Equality and really focusing on schools in the North Corridor um, where we see our highest levels of chronic absenteeism. So here at North Salem <coughs> and then those feeder schools as well. So this is something we'll be doing all throughout the year. And then we're working on um, creating partnerships with folks in the community to incentivize attendance and help remove barriers to attendance. At Auburn Elementary, where we kicked it off, uh, Principal Shumway said, yeah, you know, attendance is pretty good, except for when the weather changes, our kids quit coming to school because they walk and they don't have rain clothes. Okay, so we just partnered with some community groups, got some rain gear, and now Katie's raffling that off on Mondays and Fridays when they have the lowest attendance to get kids in before the weather turns. Um, so we're really trying to think outside the box on some ways to remove those barriers and get those kids in school. So that in a nutshell is everyday, hashtag everyday 24J. Does anyone have any questions? Thoughts? If you have feedback, I would love to hear it. We've met with office managers about this. We've met, we have been like going around talking to as many folks as we can, um, faith leaders, uh, different community groups, so that we can make sure that it's not just a Salem Kaiser public schools thing, but a community thing. Um, so if you have thoughts on how we can improve our campaign, what we need to focus on, we know it's not a quick fix, um, and we know it's probably not a one-year deal, but we want to move that dial and really focus on um, removing those barriers, getting children in, and rewarding them for that positive behavior. PBIS, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> so are we sure we don't have any other questions? Okay, moving on. Um, our employee newsletter, who's watched our most recent one? All right, it's our favorite time of the year. We're gonna watch, we're gonna watch it together.
CFO Mike Wolf about the main portion of the bond that's dedicated to adding space at our schools. You can check out the first episode of Building for Success on YouTube. All right, Aaron, I think it's my turn. What do you call a teapot of boiling water on the top of Mount Everest? Uh, what? You call it a high pot in use. High pot in use. Oh, well, there's nothing funny about geometry. I took geometry once, maybe twice, and I don't remember ever laughing. But I did show up to class every day in District 12, as in Oregon School District 12, not Hunger Games District 12. <laughs> anyway, that is what we are encouraging our students to do, to be in school every day in District 24J. Every day 24J is the name of our district's campaign to raise awareness about chronic absenteeism and to promote regular attendance in our schools. Nearly one in three of our students is chronically absent, meaning they are missing at least a month of instruction time during the school year. We have recently released Everyday 24J videos in English and Spanish, and they are also available on YouTube. A big shout out to students at North Salem and South Salem High Schools for providing the voiceover work for these animations. We have campaign swag such as buttons, stickers, posters, and yard signs. If you'd like to request any of these items, click on the Everyday 24J story on Insight 24J for more details. We would like to remind staff about Safe Oregon, a confidential tip line that gives our students, parents, schools, and communities a confidential way to report safety threats or potential acts of violence. Salem Kaiser does have a sophisticated and proactive intervention system in place known as the Threat Response System, which offers step-by-step -step protocols on preventing and controlling potentially dangerous situations. The Safe Oregon tip line adds an additional resource to ensure students and staff have a confidential avenue for reporting. This program is run and managed by the Oregon State Police and has proven to prevent acts of violence. You may report a tip by calling or sending a text to 844-472-3367 anytime. Tips also can be emailed to tip at safeoregon.com or through the Safe Oregon app. For more information, go to www.safeoregon.com. Good to know. Now it's time to highlight some of our amazing students. South Salem senior Claire Adams is a young board member of the United Way of the Mid Willamette Valley. She is on a mission to help the homeless in Salem. Claire is trying to raise $200,000 to $250,000 to create a mobile shower and hygiene unit for our area's homeless population to use. Claire has already received a $50,000 donation from the United Way, and her project has been highlighted in the news as well. You can find the link to that story in the description text below this video. That's awesome, Aaron. Now we've got two middle school students who are moving on to the final round of a national STEM competition. John Madlin and Mihir Joshi were both chosen as 30 Broadcom Masters finalists from 2,800 applicants to compete in a five-day-long competition in Washington, D.C. later this month. Broadcom Masters is a program that seeks to inspire young scientists, engineers, and innovators who will solve the grand challenges of the future. John and me here teamed up on a project to protect a potential Mars colony from solar radiation using charged particle shielding. And Aaron didn't include any other details from their project on the script because it started to make his head hurt. Congratulations, John and me here, and best of luck in the upcoming competition. And speaking of competitions, there's only one week left to turn in nominations for the 2018 Crystal Apple Awards. If you are interested in nominating a coworker for a Crystal Apple Award, you can find the form and more details on SCEF's website listed on the screen. Nomination forms must be turned in by October 10th at 5 p.m. Okay, Tom, last one. What do you call an angle that is adorable? An acute angle. <laughs> Get it? Oh, yeah, I got it. Well, Salem Kaiser, that's all the time we have for you today. If you have any stories you'd like to share or good math jokes, let us know by emailing info at salkais.k12.or.us. Thanks for watching and join us next time on The Insider. Because you're fun. Okay. <laughs> Aaron writes all those scripts himself. I think he may, he may Google the, some of the jokes or like get them from Laffy Taffy or something. Um,
But uh, we're always looking for new hosts for The Insider. And we need you to reach out and say, hey, I'd love to be a co-host. We want to make sure that our co-hosts are representative from across the district and and have, you know, a, a real glimpse of the work that we do here in Salem Kaiser Public Schools. So don't be shy. Sometimes people get volunteered or voluntold. <laughs> um, but we would love to have you. So um uh, the final piece that I wanted to touch on was around crisis communications. As you know, we have shifted our approach on those to be really proactive in how we're communicating about a crisis. Um, making sure that, first and foremost, people know that their kids are safe. Um, when a crisis happens, we start with just the smallest group affected so that if it's in your school, you know what's happening. Um, and you're aware so that you can help field calls, ease concerns of your colleagues, um, help get that information out, and then we expand from there. I know that um, this past week we had a really scary incident. We had a child bring a weapon um, to one of our schools, a firearm um, that was not loaded. Um, and so there's been some questions, well, why didn't you tell everyone about this? Um, instead of letting us find out from the news. And that's a really good learning opportunity for us. Um, it's hard to gauge, you know, sometimes when we send all staff emails, I get a reply back saying, quit emailing me. <laughs> um, and so we want to make sure that we, we share that information and that we're transparent. However, we don't want to be disruptive to your day, particularly when it's a, a situation that doesn't impact the safety of your school, it doesn't impact your operations. Four Corners didn't even need to go on a lockdown during that situation because it was so fast. Uh, it was reported by a student. The staff checked, found it, called the police, called our SRO. The SRO was there within two minutes coming from another school. Um, so he responded immediately, and then it was gone. They said that he carried it out to their evidence room in a little um, backpack with with um, unicorns on it. It was pink. Um, but they put it in there and he took it away. And there was never any need to even go into a lockdown. So if it were a lockdown situation, then we would be posting that on our social media feed. It would first go, you know, we would put it on our Twitter. That goes on our um, home page. We would post it on Facebook if we needed to, if it impacted the school day or, or impacted the safety of children. So, um, you know, this is one of those situations, yes, our employees deserve to know and not find out news from the news. However, at what point do we draw the line and not disrupt your day because of a situation that didn't impact safety, it didn't impact the school day, um, and it didn't even cause a lockdown. So that's one of those situations we still have to feel out and gauge what's, what's the right level of communication for our uh, community. We also had a really awful situation last week um, at Sprague High School where they lost a student. Um, <clears throat> and it was the second time in three weeks that they lost a student. The communication around the two was different. The first time, um, the principal said, I've got this. I don't need any help. We're good. Um, no auto dialer was sent. <clears throat> uh, and, and that's my fault. I should have pressed on that. But um, we heard in response to that, the community saying, well, you didn't let us know. Why didn't, you, why didn't you send us a call about this? So this time, we sent an auto dialer because we learned and we're improving and we're getting better. However, we knew that that would look like we were treating one student differently than the other, uh, which was certainly not the intention um, but was kind of the perceived reality. And we totally get that, but again, it's about the process getting better and people getting information from trusted resources. So that was a really difficult one <clears throat> because both of the students' parents worked in schools in our district. So then suddenly it required notifications at different schools, um, supports at different schools. So, um, you know, I share this to say that no two situations will do, be the same, however, I remain committed and my team and Christy and our leadership to making sure that employees are getting the information that they really, that you deserve to know. Um, because I don't want you to find out things from the news. I want you to be able to find out things from us. 
I'm not sure that posting on our social media that a weapon was found in a school is totally, totally the appropriate move. Um, so I just have to figure out what that looks like. Um, and if anyone has any suggestions on that, I would be, you know, I would love to let you bend my ear on that because I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing for y'all. Any questions about those? Again, we will always post lockdowns on Twitter. Twitter is populated to our main page of our Facebook, or of, of our website. <clears throat> if it impacts student safety, or if it impacts the structure of the day, either arrival or dismissal has cascading effects, then we'll also make sure that we post it on Facebook too. Um, and we'll continue posting information in real time, even if we don't have all the details. Right? We may know that the police have told us that outside of North Salem High School, totally hypothetical, outside of North Salem High School, they have a situation that requires us to lock down. However, it's dismissal time. And so it's 3.15, they should be leaving, but we need to keep them here. We don't know all the details. We're hearing that maybe there was a weapon involved outside of the school. We're gonna go ahead and call parents and say, we're holding all of our children right now. We don't have any information on when they'll be released. All walkers, drivers, bus riders will be held at this time. And then as we get more information, we'll provide that to parents in English and Spanish um, to make sure that they know what's happening. Sometimes there will be a delay on our auto dialer simply because we wanna make sure that we get it translated and translated appropriately. We don't wanna trust Google Translate to be the owner of our message. I don't know if y'all remember the water crisis, um, but they relied on some automated translations that didn't quite make sense. Um, <laughs> or even just the automated message in English didn't quite make sense. So we want to make sure we're learning and growing and improving. Um, and so we may take a little bit of extra time to verify information or to ensure that it's transla translated properly. Um, but we feel strongly that that's our responsibility to our community. Thoughts? Questions, comments, feedback? All Did anyone see West Salem High School on Good Morning America this weekend? ABC Evening News? Oh, we made national news. One of our football, yeah, one of our football players there has one arm and he just signed uh, to play D1 football uh, in Montana. So we had all the national news outlets here last week. We had PBS NewsHour here today. They're gonna do a national story about our support for Marshallese students. Um, and then I just got contacted by HBO who wants to do a story about the awesome mental health services that we elect to provide for our students. So people are noticing us. We're doing, you know, the work we do, it, it matters. And, um, and folks see that, not just in our area, but across the country. So that's really cool. I'll keep you posted as we get more information on when those will run. Yeah, totally. We'll send you the link. I'm done. <laughs> Come on, ask a hard question of Lillian. Okay, if you've been here for a while, raise your hand if our communication's gotten a little better. Yeah, and the people that don't have their hand up, they haven't been here that long, but the... Um, on the uh, emergencies around lockdowns, a lot of times we'll have a lockdown in a school and then you'll have staff out in your school or your department who have kids in that school. And that was always the, what's going on? Why can't we know? And that's why we really do populate it to our Twitter feed and then onto our website. So that while you don't have lots of time for looking at social media in schools, at least if you have parents at a school that's in a lockdown, somebody in the school can say, hey, I'm, I'm watching that, don't worry. It seems like they've got it, you know, it's just level one. Uh, so um, that's why we did it in that way, not only for our parents who are out in the community, but also for our employees who have kids in our schools. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our Chief Operations Officer, Mike Wolf, who's gonna talk about the boundary realignment process. And don't you wish you could be the leader in the district that got to lead boundary changes? Okay, <laughs> so we're always gonna be nice to him here. Because when he leaves here, it's going to be rough for a few months. It's going to be hard. It's necessary. And we're very fortunate that he will take on the hard conversation with our 
community around boundary changes. All right. Well, thank you. With that introduction, all right. Um, so how many of you know that we passed a bond? Yes, I know. Um, for, okay. Um, well, part of that, really, and, and I, I will say even without the bond passing as a growing district, we'd have to take a look at our boundaries anyways. I mean, it's time, and you all know that we're sort of imbalanced, right? Uh, and I can tell you, just as a point of reference, when you think of a typical feeder system, the elementary schools feeding into the middle and then into the high, you have a high school, you have about two middle schools, right, in our, in our system, and then anywhere from six to seven middle or elementary schools seems about right. It's kind of a balanced feeder system. Um, McKay has nine middle or elementary schools in, in, it, in the feeder system. So McKay is our largest feeder system and um, it's pushing 2,400 students as a high school. And if we were to do nothing as a district, which is not our, our option really, um, they would be pushing over 2,800 in less than five years. And so as part of our bond analysis, and you've heard all this before, many of you have, some of you are brand new to this conversation, at least here, um, we have what's called the 2200 model in our, in our district. So we're building capacity at each of our six high schools to handle uh, 2200 high school students. Well, that means clearly our boundaries need to be reviewed and adjusted. And so that's what this task force is doing. And they've had two meetings. Uh, we actually gave them tonight or tomorrow night off. Uh, it's a board, board meeting. And we introduced what, what was called a springboard proposal for them as, as work group. Uh, work groups uh, to work on. And so let me give you a sense of what the task force looks like. So we have about 45 members on the task force and they represent each feeder system and every level. So elementary, middle and high in each feeder system. And we have more participants from McKay, North, South and Sprague because those are the four feeder systems that will require the most adjustment to bring the whole system into balance. And so uh, last week, we introduced what was called a springboard proposal. So for several months, staff internal, right, have been working with a company called Flow Analytics. They do this for a living, and they've got some modeling software where they've loaded up our whole district, our entire student population, where the students live, and we can look at where the students will be based on our growth projections in the next 10 years. So it may be that you're out of school today that feels overcrowded, but in 10 years, the projection is that you might lose some enrollment. You may be out of school that seems like there's plenty of space now, but in 10 years, you won't have enough. So that's how we designed the bond to build capacity in uh, certain schools throughout the district. But we also knew that part of that whole process is to realign our boundaries as well, because you may remember early on in this conversation about the bond, we have a, a law, ORS 195, that basically says we have to, as a district, we have to look out into the future and see what our needs are. Um, but we can't just rely on a build option. You can't say we need a billion dollars if you haven't looked at other alternatives other than building. Well, what are, what's one of the alternatives other than building? Um, I don't know where that's going, but it, it would be a boundary review. So you have to take a look at boundary reviews and you have to look at every boundary. So every boundary in the district is being reviewed by the task force. And so no small task. We have three work groups set up. We have a West McNary work group. We have a McKay North and a South Sprague work group. And so their first uh, introduction to the springboard proposal, which was, like I said, we've been working for months behind the scenes because this is no small task. The ripple effect of, you know, um, shifting populations from one uh, elementary to another into a different middle than into the high school. Uh, there's, it's just a domino effect once you start getting into moving boundaries. And so we worked through about 10 iterations, and then uh, we developed what was called the springboard proposal, which is a starting place for the boundary review task force. Can you imagine inviting you know, 40 people to do this and saying, hey, welcome, here's a blank sheet of paper and some you know, markers, go for it. So the springboard proposal is not the answer, 
Um, but it takes us from where we are today to where we might be 10 years from now. And then the task force, their job really is to pull it apart, challenge the assumptions, use the equity lens, the equity focus for the district, and really come up with a set of recommendations to present to the superintendent at the December board meeting. And at that point, that's a public testimony. The board will have a first reading in January, uh, more public testimony, and then a decision in February. And the decision in February makes the implementation of all of the boundary adjustments for fall of 19. So fall of 19 is when the boundary adjustments will take effect. Now, for those, how many of you have been through boundary changes in this organization? Okay, so you know it's no small task. Uh, the other thing is it doesn't happen overnight, right? It takes a good three to five years for a boundary change, particularly a, signif a significant boundary change, to actually go into full effect, fully implement it. Well, that's right about the same time the capacity from the bond will be coming online. So all of the capital construction at the schools will be completed within five years. It's about the right time where the full implementation of the boundary changes will take effect. So we've been trying to sequence both. Um, and we'll see. We'll see. The task force has a lot of hard work to do, a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, but we've got a good support team with them with Flow Analytics. We have a district internal staff uh, that's focused on helping as well. And so we're the resource pool for the boundary task force. Our two co-chairs are Adriana Miranda and uh, Adam Kohler. So we have parents and citizens, uh, community members as uh, co-chairs. And um, so that's kind of where we are. We, we've had two meetings. We have a meeting every Tuesday from here on all the way through December. The meetings are from 6 to 8 at CTEC. Um, they're not open to the public, just so you know. People have asked, hey, can I come and watch? Um, we're not going to kick anybody out, but uh, these 50 people have a lot of hard work to do, and they don't need any distractions uh, along the way. So that's kind of that's kind of where we are. Be happy to take any questions that you might have. How many people? Have, I know you you raise your hand around boundary changes. The last really really big one was West High. Anybody here for that? West High? Yeah. Well, that was a big one, right? Yeah. This is bigger. A lot bigger. Mm -hmm. What are what are the top three factors that or uh, that the boundary uh, task force are looking at? You know, there's more than three. It's it's actually uh, we have guiding principles uh, as a district for boundary changes, and I think there are about seven guiding principles. Um, we've adjusted them based on the equity focus. I can get those to you. It's actually on one of our QIM documents, um, but we also have a nice uh, sheet that has the principles on them and um, really tough questions and considerations that we're asking the task force to take into account uh, as they move forward. But just to give you some idea, um, access to uh, educational programs, um, what's really important, we, we also conducted a parent survey, a parent guardian survey as part of this process. Uh, and the, the highest uh, ranked concern of our parents in this process is to maintain neighborhood schools, number one. Number two is that our students with special needs attend their high schools. And we did not prompt that, by the way. I know that's part of the bond, but that came from our parents, that our students with special needs need to stay in their feeder systems and ultimately graduate uh, from their high school. So those are the two highest. Transportation comes in a close third on that. Uh, not uh, people like the, the fact that we have a transportation system they just don't like their kids to be on a bus uh, forever and we get that totally walk zones safe walk zones safe routes to schools to and from also uh, another really high consideration so those are some of the aspects that the task force will be looking at one thing in the development of the springboard um, we didn't staff we did not move any kiddos out of their walk zone to bus to another school. And that's part of the maintain your neighborhood school, right? Because in your neighborhood, you'd like to be able to walk to your school safely. And so.
there forever together, and then all of a sudden they were all split up into different middle schools and different uh-huh. high schools, and it didn't seem to make much sense when Kid down in Lansing, way far away, would bus over to South and said, this is going to North. Yeah. So, so it was really clunky, and we didn't really like it because we just really feel like we, we developed those neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if y'all heard that. I'm not going to be able to repeat all that, but basically it's really hard in a boundary change process when you have to move from your established school and your established neighborhoods. And and so we we hear you. We, we that's part of the work. Now, here's what I would say also is do you think we can meet all of everyone's expectations in this process? No. Absolutely not. Are we going to try really hard? You betcha. Um, and, and we'll see. And that's the work of the task force, believe me. They're, they're looking at this really hard. They're doing great work. Any other questions? All right, more to follow for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there are. Um, mostly parents. You know, this is really a, a community driven um, process. But uh, yes, we have a representation across the board on the task force. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically how does growth play into like development into the boundary review process? Great question. Part of the development of the springboard is we take a look at all of the growth, the current growth and the future projected growth over the next 10 years within the urban growth boundary. So within the UGB, there's only certain areas that can grow. And so we've taken those into account. We've also taken into account all of the permits to get that. There's your real indicator. Um, You know, you may see a a field and think, "Ooh, something's going to go in there. But unless there's permits and uh, land use applications, then it's not moving and so but that we have seen an uptick in the last five years of developable land that's really being developed and so we've taken all that into account as we look into the next 10 years for potential growth it's tricky but but you but you can do it yes Yes. So, so we've taken into account all of the programmatic IDTs, which would be lit squared, the like, you know, I, I think we know what we're talking about, right? Um, y- you may have an attendance area like Clear Lake that doesn't have an ELL program to serve those students. So those students would go to Kaiser. So we've taken into account all of that. We've also taken into account title status because in a title school, you have to dedicate one room separate for reading intervention. So we've taken that into account. We've also taken into account um, special education programs. And something that we're really excited about is during this process, we believe we're, we're going to be able to coalesce the um, special education, um, the programs, self-contained programs in each feeder system. So there won't be students you know, who may live in South Salem going to Kaiser to receive services. We'll be able to keep the uh, students with special needs in their feeder system at every level and then ultimately graduate um, at their, their neighborhood high school. So we've taken all of that into account in the springboard and the task force has taken a look at all of that. Which means we can't move any programs until we're done. Okay, no, no, nobody moves anything until we're done with this and then we'll figure it out. Yes. No new schools, no, but there'll be 29 uh, really uh, nice additions. Uh, the biggest uh, additions obviously are at the high school level, all six high schools, um, but also six of the uh, 11 middle schools and 17 of our elementary schools will have major capital construction projects, Auburn being the largest at the elementary school. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you.
Good questions. I bet there'll be more. Okay, uh, before we do our last item, and Eric, I'll take it for you, but let me do some introductions first. Um, I want to make sure you know everyone that's in the room today, and we'll have others that join us. Um, but uh, Bob Silva, Director of Technology. John Bate, Executive Director of Human Resources. Uh, Christy, I sort of introduced, but she's the, Christy Patton is the one you're getting the emails from. Uh, and then Linda Myers, our Director of Strategic Initiatives. And uh, if we have topics that relate to others, other district leaders will bring them in. And generally, uh, Mike and John and Linda and Lily and I will be here every time. So if there's other just building specific questions, you are welcome to ask us um, on the side on your way out. Um, so we're going to end today with, I'm going to let uh, Lillian show the little public service announcement, PSA. Somehow I get, I'm not going to say this, never mind. I, I, no, no, it's captured forever. <laughs> I had a different acronym in my mind. Uh, so uh, we're going to get a little feedback from you um, today because we do know there's lots of challenges out in schools right now with adult assistance. Um, not in the employees are a challenge, but we know the resources have really been reduced mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to make do with a lot less. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and you can all say, yep, that's exactly what we're feeling. Um, so what we want to do is get a little feedback from you, some written feedback, and what I'm really going to ask you to be is really as specific as possible. So if you say, um, I am really worried about um, X in my school, I, I don't need names, but I really need to know which school and specifically about what you're worried about. Because we get feedback from a variety of places and the more specific we can hear from people. And so, and this will be an ongoing topic for us and we'll begin to um, probably ask some feedback each time as well. Um, if you don't have any knowledge, any specific knowledge, don't worry. This is just one place where we can get a little bit of feedback. So, um, and Eric, I didn't introduce you, I'm sorry. Uh, Eric Richards, our Director of Special Education and Student Services, uh, so counseling and all of that. Sorry, I took your agenda topic and then I didn't introduce you. He is also here if you, need, if you have questions of him. Um, but he's gonna pass out the feedback forms. I'm gonna let Lillian uh, tee up the public service announcement and uh, then you can write, if you don't have anything to do, we're free, you're free to go. If you, can, if you can write that out for us and hand it to us, kind of your ticket out the door. Um, for, thank you for coming, I appreciate this. I know it's one more thing in your day in very busy um, times, but I do appreciate the time you spend to get here and um, be on this group. So, all righty, now you can start. And I, I failed to say one thing. I just want to give a big moment of appreciation to Brian Anderson. Raise your hand, Brian. It was Brian's idea to live stream this, and he took care of all the details working with Bob. And so now, thanks to his hard work on this, our colleagues can see it, and it will live in uh, posterity forever and ever on the website. Take a button before you go, or take two. Missing a day or two of school may not seem like a big deal, but that time matters. If a student misses just two days of school a month, by the end of the year, that ends up to an entire month of lost instruction. Continue that pattern through elementary and middle school, and by the time a student gets to high school, he or she will have missed out on a whole year. In Salem-Kaiser Public Schools, we want all of our students to graduate prepared for successful lives. Students who miss 20 days of school or more a year have just a 20% chance of graduating, but students who regularly attend school are 172% more likely to graduate, setting the stage for success in college and higher rates of employability. So what can we do? Be there all day, every day in District 24J. Salem-Kaiser Public Schools, be there.